Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video we will talk about the required npm package for the react application and we will just generally talk about the basic principles of react why it is popular and what are the basic principles on which it is built okay so what is react and what else it actually solves right so till now from our discussion it is clear that react is being used to create a uh, building blocks in the ui with the help of components so we are writing components a declarative components which has everything in it and with some user interactions they are getting changed and they are re-rendering themselves on the ui okay so it is actually open source and most of the enterprise projects are now on the react react with graphql or we are using some previous versions and now people are moving to the latest version of react which is 16 dot x okay first of all you need to understand this when you talk about react and any other framework is react is not mvc framework okay it's not a templating library which is just rendering the html template and it is obviously not providing two-way data binding which people get confused okay in angular 1.x there was two-way data binding same kind of concept it is providing react is purely one-way data flow data flows from parent to child that's it it's not like child will also change the data and send it and emit the event to the parent component parent component will show okay so two-way data binding which we see in angular 1.x in typical structure or in angular with the ng model we see in angular 2 right that is two-way data binding but react is nowhere close to that react has a simplified data flow data flow is coming from the parent to child child is receiving the data so we will be building these components ui components where and whole application will not be a single component itself you have to divide your application into multiple components okay so react is v of mvc means it is a view right it is just another way of thinking a stateful ui stateful ui means a ui having state you have a product list ui and cart component like in the flip cart you see you see the list of items and the cart on the top right when you keep adding the items cart is automatically getting changed you see the count is getting increased on when you do shopping on the amazon or mintra or any other shopping cart website right because the state of that application is getting changed you are adding the items from the cart removing the items from the cart same kind of things are reflecting so that is a stateful ui you are building and what we are doing is we are writing declarative UI, right? So whenever the change is happening in the UI, it is tossing everything and it is re-rendering conceptually, which you are not able to visualize. It is happening so fast because the React component re-renders with a 60 frame per second. So much fast, right? Okay, so we'll just talk about the React basic fundamentals. React is providing one-way data flow. React provides a virtual DOM and React is only view of mvc these three things basically we will extend these description what is v of mvc what is virtual dom what is one way data flow why it is not two way data flow which we had in angular 1.x or somewhat so some people will say okay this is also throwing an event or passing some data from child to parent also kind of same as two way data flow but react is purely one way flow to remove these inconsistencies between data when data flows from here to there okay it is just throwing the data from the parent component to the child tree so you can see like a, there is a dome tree so data is flowing from the top to bottom okay so we'll talk about this so virtual dom and virtual dom is nothing but a mechanism using which we are able to apply the change okay so to understand this in the real life first we will talk about is consider that you are in a shopping cart website in left hand side you see the list of cart and at the right hand side you see the your shopping cart checkout button right you keep adding the number of items the shopping cart will keep items increasing the items decreasing the items so that is something like you have to refresh the change you have to refresh the ui to show the change to the user when you are removing something from the cart when you are adding something from the cart you have to show the update the count you have to update the price which user need to pay right so that is actually re-rendering is happening you are changing something by user interaction adding item removing item increasing the count of the item something is getting changed on the right hand side 
that is nothing but re-rendering is happening for that cart component based on the user is changing on the screen okay let's stop let's stop here and uh, we'll extend this what react is based on these three principles react dom one way data flow react is only talking about ui when it when we talk about mvc okay so what we will do is we'll try to understand npm so npm is a node package manager this is the first tool we are going to talk about in previous video we talked about okay what all toolings we need what all different terms we try to understand is we try to talk about babel we try to talk about webpack and simple react component es6 right so npm also npm is actually helping us to run the scripts like you can see this my package.json here i'm writing the npm run start npm run build right if you are not familiar with npm there is npm npm course on my channel so what npm is doing is you are doing npm install so i'm inside this d1 folder sorry let me open this in terminal okay now i'm in the current working directory so i can do npm install what actually it is doing is it will look into the package root json and it will install the packages which are defined in it right we have already seen we have added two packages for our project is npm install minus minus save react and react dom these two packages we need if you are starting purely from scratch you wanted to do everything from scratch uh, not not like something is already there what you can do is you just go to and i will just create one folder and if uh, npm is already installed right so you can do npm in it and you just answer your application and then you can install your packages so i'm installing these packages uh, on different place and then you start writing the component here but writing the component is enough to run that if you are writing simple react component okay i have index.js now which is created is it just enough i can i run this no my browser can't run this i have to do other things also right so in the temp you can see i did npm install so i got not modules even if i create index.js let's do that and i pasted this component will i be able to run this no right here uh, what i have right now in the temp folder is package.json is having react react dom it is having react react dom and in my index.js i have the component but that is not enough what we need is react tooling to run the run the component because what we are dealing with these three or four different things babel webpack es6 npm if you are not using create react app again I'm starting from scratch. I'm not using create react app. So in that case, you have to face this trouble and this is enough. This is fine. I mean, you should know how to write the application without create react app, how to write webpack config, what actually is happening with your react component when it is getting built, right? So what I'm doing is uh, killing this and I already have these both the packages in my package root JSON. So, so I'm skipping it. Okay. What I need is the webpack to uh, react tooling. In react tooling the first thing is i need babel what babel will be able to give me is compiling this react component into es5 this is es6 browser can't understand it it's gsx something written weird html gsx syntax in javascript browser can't understand so i need babel which is actually a compiler which will transpile this es6 code to es5 and how it will do we have to use webpack for that so webpack will take help from babel to compile your component bundle everything and give you final output bundle okay so i have done npm install so when i'm doing npm run build so, so we have actually we are using babel so you can see in the package.json you can see all the dependencies of babel babel core babel loader babel preset all these loaders and these packages are required to actually compile the react code into es5 okay 
there are some special plugins we are using style loaders to actually compile the styles into javascript and these are the webpack dependencies webpack is a module loader and bundler we are using so it is compiling everything inside a single file so you can see i will just remove this dist folder and we'll try to see npm run build it will actually doing the webpack build command and it will give me the output right so you can see the dist, dist is having main.js file, lot of code here inside it, which is minified. And we can see the index.html, right? Here we have added this script main.js and this ID. Now if I try to run this, npm run start. So from the package.json, I can run it. There is a start command npm run start. And the, I'm using webpack 4, so you can pass the mode and open, which will open a default port and here I'm can see my application is running and now we will see what this application look like so you can actually inspect the components and if you have a react components already created so you can see I have a hello component which is highlighted I don't have anything else this is hello component right so this is how we are able to see our application running now it is actually running with the webpack so whenever you change the code all these things will happen so it will start compiling it you see so because we are using webpack dev server which actually keeps reloading whenever you are changing the code in your component and if you are violating any rules okay oops we got the error right because we have actually modified the jsx and it is not i mean it, it will complain because there is no proper closing for the text we will understand this why it why it is complaining because it is not a valid jsx Okay, now uh, we can see that index.html is hosted. So what we did in this code is we used these two links. I am providing you these configuration directly. In the next video, I will talk in the detail what all tools we used and in depth what we can understand from them.